and about kind of letting people play with it for a while um, versus making modifications and modifications, which I thought was interesting. And there's a couple of things that I would uh, recommend in terms of uh, developing new applications. One is that you uh, get real clear uh, functional requirements that clearly state exactly what it is your system's going to do. And that's really your roadmap to developing your system. I mean, it's pretty basic and, and simple when you think about it. If you're going to build a car, you can lay out what the car's going to look like. And with building a system, it's the same way. I mean, you basically come up with the functional requirements. And a lot of people, I think, where they fail is they, you know, building the kind of functional requirements is, uh, it costs money. You know, it costs money taking time to make sure you do it right to begin with. And, uh, and getting user signed, you know, getting your key people to look at those requirements and buy in and say, yeah, that's exactly what we want. Because typically what happens is uh, when you start building these applications, <coughs> what happens is that uh, you get halfway through it because you don't have real good uh, functional requirements. And, uh, you know, what, people say, well, that's not what I want. That, you know, I thought I was going to get that. And then all of a sudden, your IT folks are going back and you're trying to uh, redo you know, you have to understand that when you start introducing changes into a system uh, through its development uh, uh, period, that it's going to cost a lot more money to go back and refit a change that is needed in the application than if you had taken the time initially to think it through and say, hey, this is what I'm going to need. So, I mean, that's, that's one aspect, I think, that if you're going to build a system, that you definitely should consider. The other thing is that, you know, consider phase one, phase two. Uh, a lot of people get wrapped up where, you know, you get together, you get these committees going, and everyone's like, oh, this is going to be great. We're going to be able to do everything with this system, right? We're going to, hey, we're going to, you know, it's going to be able to clean the board. I mean, you know, everything. And what happens is that if you're building something that you don't really, I mean, cost-wise, you don't need, you know? so. You know, what I always think of it is, it's like, you know, look at what you're really going to get business-wise from it. If you can, if you can get 80% in phase one, let's say, and it's going to accomplish 95% of what your business needs are, your critical business needs, then, you know, do it in that phase. Because basically what you're going to do is, you're going to be able to get the system up and running a lot quicker. <coughs> because, believe me, the bells and whistles, that's what really takes the time, okay? And, you know, you look back and, uh, you know, that phase two can be the bells and whistles. You know, like, okay, yeah, this would, this, it would be nice to have this report. Wouldn't it be nice to have this information, okay? But when you look at what, you know, and especially today, everyone has a limited budget. No one has this IT unlimited budget anymore. That you have to be realistic in terms of what your applications can, uh, you know, do. So, uh, so that's, that's my recommendation. Thank you. Sorry. I think it's very helpful. I <laughs> <laughs> we feel the passion. Yes. Because the system is evolving faster than you 